there how long ago it was that this all happened. God said, Behold, I've given you all of the herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which is the fruit of the tree, yielding seed to you, it shall be for your food, and every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them. Here it is, all in order. The seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. It wasn't that he was weary and tired. It was just that the work was finished. And so no more things to create. And so God uh, had finished the creation and thus rested. Now, the second chapter is really a elaboration of the first chapter. In the Hebrew literature, it is very common to sort of lay out sort of the outline or the whole plan and then to start filling in details. And this is what we have here in Genesis 1 and 2. We have the general creation up until the creation of man. It's all complete. But now he's going to come back in chapter 2 and begin to give you some of the details of how these things happened in chapter 1. Uh, and thus it is a... Uh, elaborating on what you have already read, the general overall view, and now looking at it a little more carefully. The heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the hosts. The seventh day, God ended the work, and he rested from all of his work that he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all of his work, which God created and made. God sanctified or set apart the seventh day, having completed his work. When God chose the nation of Israel to be the nation through which he would bring the Messiah into the world, God gave to the nation of Israel the law that on the Sabbath day they were to rest. And it was a day of just the worship of God and they weren't to do any labor on the seventh day. And the Lord said it was a sign of his covenant between God and the nation of Israel through all of their generations. It was a covenant with the nation of Israel. It is interesting that when Jesus did come, and when Jesus died and rose again, it was on the eighth day that Jesus rose again. And so the church adopted the eighth day for the day of worship. And so we gather on Sunday, the eighth day, uh, and uh, it, there are those that say, well, you know, you should worship on the Sabbath day. Worship on Sunday is... Um, you know, the mark of the beast and things of that nature, but uh, it, it's really sort of stretching things out and making the Sabbath something that God didn't make it. As Jesus said, man was made for, uh, was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. And thus, uh, Paul said, don't let anybody judge you in respect to holy days, new moon, Sabbath days, these are all a shadow of things to come, uh, but uh, the substance, not the shadow, but the substance is Christ. And Christ is our Sabbath. Christ is our rest. We who have believed in Christ have ceased from our labors. We're entering into the rest of his work. He is the one that has provided salvation. I can't do anything to uh, merit or deserve or even earn salvation. I have to just accept the finished work of Jesus Christ, like God finished his work as far as creation. He finished the work as far as our redemption when Jesus 
rose again from the dead, raised for our uh, redemption. So uh, God hallowed the Sabbath day and uh, sanctified it. And these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created or assembled. And the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Every plant of the field before it was on the earth, every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. There was not a man to till the ground, but there went up from uh, a mist from the earth and it watered the whole face of the ground. So a heavy uh, mist in the uh, air at night and the ground was watered. You didn't have to worry about irrigation and whatever. Uh, it was a uh, hydrologic kind of a uh, masterpiece that God made in the beginning. The Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of light, and man became a living soul. The human body, when you study the human body and the facets of the human body, study the brain, how it functions, study just the blood, study any part of the body, and it is so, as David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and that my soul knows right well. The miracles of life and the human body and the capacities of the human body, uh, thinking process, the retaining of the thoughts and so forth. It's something that man just can't explain that just happened as a result of billions of years of evolving from a simple cell, which is not a simple cell at all, there's nothing in the world like uh, of a simple cell it's very complex uh, extremely complex and and thus uh, man's body extremely complex god formed the body out of the dust of the earth interesting that the same 14 elements that make up the dirt outside are the same 14 elements that make up your body as God will declare, dust thou art, and to dust you shall return. And so, uh, you know, man, poor man, uh, the vain show, uh, you know, of the body, and look at all of the attention and all we put on our bodies and how we seek to care for our bodies, but they're nothing but dust, a bit of mud, and uh, one day there'll be dust again. It's the life that God breathed into man, and he became a living soul. So the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So it draws our attention to two special trees. One, the tree of life, the other, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there went out a river from Eden, and don't try and find out in uh, your uh, geography books uh, where uh, these rivers are. After the flood, the whole face of the earth was obviously changed, and uh, what were once uh, ocean beds uh, became desert plains, and uh, what was once ocean, ocean beds became mountain tops. There was a great uh, geological upheaval as the result of the flood, and we'll get to that when we get to chapter 6. But there uh, went out of Eden the, the, uh, the water uh, to water the garden, and from there it was parted and became foreheads, and it tells you these rivers uh, that existed prior to the flood here in the book of Genesis. But when we get to verse 17, we take a look now at this tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
And God said, you shall not eat of it. 